It's almost like I hear them. I can hear them call, and uh, it's like I can't get to them. The call had to be consciously changed, and it was changed. The county admits that, and because of that change, no actions were taken to prevent the tragedy that occurred. Now at 6, an update from WRTV Investigates on the decisions and actions that led to tragedy in Franklin County. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Nicole Griffin. New information reveals 911 operators may have violated policy by not sending help to a flooded bridge in March of 2020. Yes, yeah, six people died after the water swept them away, despite several 911 calls warning that the bridge was washed out. This happened on the Saints Creek Bridge in Franklin County. That's near the town of Laurel in southeastern Indiana. WRTV investigates Kara Kenny and photographer Brad Forstall bring us this update today night to the crisis on the creek. Father Josh Mosier filed a wrongful death lawsuit in January against Franklin County. Since we first told you about the crisis on the creek back in April, a lot has been happening behind the scenes, including depositions of the 911 operators who were working that morning, as well as the 911 supervisor. Josh's attorney says what they revealed is proof this whole tragedy could have been prevented. The holidays are a tough time for Franklin County father, Josh Mosier. This will be the second Christmas without his daughters, Kylie and Elysium, and their half-brother, Ethan. Kylie was uh, very emotional, clingy. She was, uh, she liked dressing up, playing in her tutus, and uh, most of the time on my lap. Elysium, um, she was tough for such a little girl. No fear whatsoever. The morning of March 20th, 2020, three people called Franklin County 911 and the Sheriff's Department to warn the Saints Creek Bridge was covered in water. 911, what's your emergency? Uh, Saints Creek Road is flooded. Okay, is there an emergency? Is there somebody stuck? No, we just need yeah. to like going down the hill, they turned around, but yeah, it's flooded bad. Yes, the bridge here on Saints Creek at the bottom of Saints Creek Hill is completely washed out, it's gone. On one side. Somebody better get down here and block it off before somebody goes into the river. Okay, we will let them know. Thank you. The water is so deep, he drives a red GMC truck. Okay. He said the water is so deep it was halfway up his headlights and it is moving very fast and it almost took him down the creek. Minutes after the last call, Josh's ex-girlfriend, Felina Lewis, was driving her kids to the babysitter when her van got swept away by floodwaters on Sains Creek Bridge. Kylie, Elysium, Ethan, and Felina drowned. Burton Spurlock and Sean Roberts went off the same bridge and also died that morning. Josh found his daughter's bodies, but it was too late. Definitely makes it hard to sleep. Uh, it's almost like I hear him. I can hear him call, and uh, it's like I can't get to him. Josh filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Franklin County back in January. New information reveals the crisis on the creek could have been prevented. Through a records request, WRTV Investigates obtained a copy of the policy and procedure manual, which says when Franklin County Dispatch receives a call of any type of obstruction or failure to a Franklin County road, like trees down, flooded water, the appropriate county highway supervisor will be notified. We're down the record. We also obtained this video deposition, which is part of the wrongful death lawsuit. 911 supervisor John Hundley testified about the county's policy. You get a call that a, a, a bridge has washed out. Yes. Um, are you calling county highway? Yes. Are you calling a sheriff's deputy? Yes. If there's one available, yes. And is that the policy of the department? Yes. Hundley testified a dispatch trainee and her supervisor both heard this 418 call about 40 minutes before Felina's van went into the creek. Somebody better get down here and block it off before somebody goes into the river. Okay, we will let them know. So at that point in time at 418, you have two dispatchers that know the Saints Creek Bridge is washed out, don't you? Yes. 
but they did not let anyone know, court documents allege. Instead, Hundley testified someone working in the call center consciously converted the 418 call to an I call. That means information only. And according to the county's training manual, an I call does not have to be assigned or cleared by an officer. Was that an aha moment? It was for us. Josh Mosier's attorney, Tim Devereaux. What we didn't realize until we got into these depositions is that <clears throat> the call had to be consciously changed. And it was changed. The county admits that. And because of that change, no actions were taken to prevent the tragedy that occurred. A Franklin County chief deputy learned about this decision when he called dispatch the evening of March 20th to ask if anyone had reported the bridge was out. God help whoever didn't pass that on if it did. Uh -huh. We, there was a, was a call at 4:18. It says advised that the bridge on Saints Creek is completely washed away. What did they do with it? It looks like it was made an eye call. Are you f kidding me? Devereaux believes six people would still be alive today had the 911 operators followed the county's policy. It's a hard pill to swallow. I was trying to think, how am I going to tell Josh? I mean, it's going to be it's difficult to have to tell him that your worst fears have been confirmed. This was preventable. You really feel for him, don't you? Yep. You're a father as well? Yep. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Josh Mosier and his attorneys allege Franklin County was negligent by failing to warn the traveling public about the bridge. They also filed an amended lawsuit on October 15th, naming Copperhead Excavating out of Laurel, Indiana as a defendant. They claim the company contracted with Franklin County to perform shoring services around the Saints Creek Bridge. The lawsuit claims Copperhead was negligent by failing to properly place, anchor, or secure the stone blocks to prevent the approaches to the bridge from washing out during times of high water. The blocks that were positioned there were not cemented together. We can't see that they were cabled together or that they were in any way secure. So that's one of the things we're doing in our lawsuit is we want to dig in to see how that work was done, how it should have been done, and the extent that this incident could have been avoided had this been done properly. Copperhead's attorney declined to comment to WRTV, but in its response to the court, Copperhead denies it was negligent and blames an act of God. Copperhead Excavating also says the work completed in 2017 was performed in a workmanlike manner and points out they were not involved in the design or the construction of the bridge itself. In a court filing, Franklin County denies it was negligent and also denies Copperhead was negligent. Franklin County claims as a government agency, they're immune from liability in this case. They've asked the court for more time. Josh Mosier's attorneys are fighting any delays. We have families that are seeking closure. You know, they would like to see this case resolved. Oh, ladies. Josh Mosier tries to stay busy with his work as a cattle farmer. He finds it difficult to accept that his daughters, as well as Felina and Ethan, are gone, knowing the policy required dispatchers to contact a county highway supervisor. If there's a better way to handle a 911 call. That's what they're there for. It's an emergency phone call. This wasn't an accident. This was something that could have been prevented. The 911 operators are not named as defendants in the lawsuit. The county fired one of the dispatchers, but a dispatch trainee mentioned in the lawsuit is still working there. Working for you, Kara Kenny, WRTV. Josh Mosier's wrongful death lawsuit is set for a court hearing on January 6th. We have reached out to Franklin County's attorney for a response to the latest allegations involving violation of policy, and we are still waiting to hear back.